the, the reality is that you know most of us in this community haven't grown up you know thinking about marketing and selling you know maybe we're finance or operations or engineering but we do have some general managers who have you know real focus and real expertise and kind of their go to market and I'm just going to kind of lead it off with a little bit of what I think about as the art of the possible, right? Uh, and starting with why is it important, right? And look, you know, you guys have all heard about all the competitive threats. I don't really need to go back into Charter and Comcast and Amazon. But there's actually, you know, some data around stuff that's happening on the ground level. So many of you know we make a huge investment in understanding, tracking, analyzing, and helping customers who are interested in getting funding, right? So I actually have someone on my team and part of their mission is to work with financial organizations, banks, private equity firms, venture capital firms, who are interested in investing in this space. And our only goal is to find customers who are interested in growing um, and do an introduction, right? And that's really become quite a vibrant discussion in the last year, really, right? Um, and, and the private equity firms and the like, they like working with us because we work with so many of you, right? So we have a good idea as to um, the people we think, you know, are really looking to grow and get some funding and investment. Um, and that's on top of the government programs. And we literally track every announcement, every award, um, you know, all the programs, CAF, RDOF, B, et cetera. And this chart actually shows broadband present, uh, penetration by state today, right? And you can see some states are quite low. Hopefully you can read it. You know, you've got Texas at 11, Florida uh, at 39, New York at 62, 43%. Now, what's interesting is when you look at the individual states, the high numbers are where the NFL cities are, right? So when you think about 43% in the areas that all of you primarily serve, um, the states you're in, it's even lower, right? Um, and so, you know, today there's a lot of, let's call it um, open field running going on, right? Now, we also work on projecting it forward, right? Like when we look at what's happening, you know, wh what do we think it's going to look like by 2026. And our current estimate is about 73% of households will have uh, fiber to the home. And of course, if you listen to you know, what I said about New York and you know, if you look at Florida with Miami and Orlando, the vast majority of that growth is going to be in your backyards, right? And our estimate is also uh, that you know, if you're serving an area where the density is more than 20 to 25 subscribers uh, per square mile, you're more than likely going to have two to three or more competitors, right? And obviously, we're all, you know, serving mixes of communities. We've got some that are a little denser. Uh, some, like the story Michael shared, you know, we're rolling fiber down three kilometers to one farm, right? So. When they come to your area, where are they going to go? Well, they're not going to go after the barn and the farm. They're going to go after the downtown area, right? And they're going to come in and they're going to... You know. So this is the reality that we're all going to be dealing with. Now, the good news is many of you are the ones who are driving this, right? But certainly, it's one thing when Charter comes into your area or a large provider but this is going to be really, you know, organizations that start to look a little bit more like yours. And that's why we had this discussion at our um, GM advisory board, the last one we had in person in June. And you can see some of the quotes. We actually started that meeting, uh, and some of you are in the room, and Michael and I were kind of going through, hey, we want to start with a list of questions, right? And the first one was, okay, what's your biggest challenge and how can we help? We assume that would be, you know, a 15, 30 minute discussion. Um, and someone said, hey, you know, my biggest issue is I now have two other organizations that are bringing fiber in and I'm not sure I can differentiate, right? And then it went down this whole path of, 
you know, people saying, yeah, you're right, you know, I'm not sure that I'm differentiated. And then we asked the group to uh, rate their marketing organizations on a scale of zero to 10. Um, and it was a very bimodal set, right? And you can imagine which set was bigger than the other, right? The zero to five and the five to 10, right? And that was really interesting for me, right? Because you know, part of my job, half of it is on the go-to-market side in marketing. And you know, that was the first time I had been part of a discussion like that in the six years that I've been at Calix, right? Where we had a group of people just like all of you who literally were saying, my biggest challenge is I've got to figure out how to differentiate, right? Um, I've got to figure out how to market. I got to think about who I am, et cetera, et cetera. All of our advisory boards before that had been traditionally focused on you know, the technology, the solution, I need you to do this for me, you gotta work with this, et cetera, et cetera, right? And um, that really set us down the path of what you've seen over the last two days, right? I mean, really, that was the genesis of saying, look, we gotta really start sharing more and helping more. And obviously, you know, you know as well as anyone that we've put a lot of investment in things like the go-to-market program and the activation program. But um, our goal is really to help you and your marketing teams and your support teams become much more focused on, on building a great brand. And, and if you think about the things that George talked about, it doesn't seem that easy, does it, right? You know, unfortunately, we don't have Steve Jobs in our corner giving us millions of dollars. I don't know if you shared this story about like picking out like the marble tiles or where they were for the store and all of that, right? That's, that's not us, right? Um, we're all, including Calix, a lot more, um, let's call it smaller focused organizations. But this is a framework that um, we've shared with your marketing teams, those who are here. And um, we think it's a relatively simple framework to think about, you know, how do you start evolving your go-to-market, Like, right? Because you're gonna be thinking at that strategic level. So it's commit, communicate, and uh, codify, right? So the first one around commitment, you know, what we're talking about there is a little bit of like what we talked about this morning, commit, commit, committing to bring a differentiated service, right? And so I had a service provider who I met with yesterday and they said, wow, this is amazing. I mean, you know, all these people with these amazing, um, all these great MPS scores or, M, you know, it's just amazing. And they shared that their MPS score was, you know, more like five or six, right? And, you know, we're gonna be working with that organization to, to kind of help address it. And my response on sort of how are people doing it is my observation, looking at many of, of our, you know, service provider customers, it's not what they're doing, it's how they're doing it, right? And they look at every single thing they're doing. And I shared a little bit about that this morning about, you know, hey, when you roll out home network security, is it a feature in your package or is it a core part of what you're pointing out to your customers, right? Hey, we are, exaggeration here, we're your savior, right? So everyone who at the start of the Ukraine war uh, with Russia heard President Biden come out and talk about a commitment that we were making as a federal government, right? And they were gonna go work with all the businesses that work with the government to make sure that they had a better cybersecurity posture. And then he said, and we recommend all of you residents and citizens out there do the same thing, which was a nice way of saying, good luck, you're on your own, right? Um, that's an opportunity, right? You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting you go and you put that in your marketing material and say, the president has left you alone and we're here to save the day. But that's a huge message about, look, you heard the president say that everyone needs to be much more diligent about this and we're here to help, right? Which is different than saying, hey, we have a new tier and that new tier includes home network security. It's the fifth bullet point, right? And that's what I observe, right? Is just that people are thinking about not just what they're doing, but how they're doing it and how they're presenting it. 
The second one on communicating, and, and my recommendation is, you know, everyone can go back and, you know, you know, get with your teams and think about this, right? Um, and I've shared this with some of you before, but I think it bears repeating, right? So if you look at this chart, the, what I'm trying to say here is, how does your customer identify themselves, right? So if you segment your customers by who's on 100 meg and 250 and 500 and a gig, it's irrelevant to your subscribers, right? They don't stand up and say, I'm a 100 gigger, right? Ah, I'm a megger, right? That's, that's what I'm all about, right? But what's interesting is more and more, particularly after the pandemic, we've seen this huge focus on, on broadband. People actually start identifying by the way they're using your service. It's actually unbelievably, it's this huge phenomenon, right? I'm a gamer. People actually say that, right? I'm a gamer, right? And what I want is I don't want to get in a multiplayer game and then I start having lag and I get behind and my team loses and I'm a pariah, right? That's what keeps that person up at night. You can solve that problem, right? So we had uh, with the marketing group a really interesting guy who runs this organization um, um, called StoryBrand. Right? And he literally, what he talks about is every movie you've ever seen follows the same exact formula. Right? There's a hero, there's a problem, there's a guide, Yoda. Just to be very clear, you're Yoda. All right? and except for at Connections, you're Luke Skywalker. Right? You're the giant. Which of course, walking five miles a day is really tiring when you're a giant, but you're the giant, right? And then there's a choice. And then you go, and by the way, if you don't take that choice, this is the bad thing that happens, and here's the promised land. And we're here to guide you, right? So she's got a problem. I keep getting shunned by my peers because I'm getting lag. But you know what? You can solve that problem. So when you go back, the first question is, is that the way we're talking to people, right? I shared the example from Paul Bunyan today, which I really saw that, right? You know, we're here. We have the technical solution to solve your problem, to make your gaming experience great so that you can be the coolest gamer. Or maybe they identify as I work from home, right? And I just want to make sure that my Zoom meeting doesn't start getting flaky and I get embarrassed in front of my boss because my kids start streaming when they get home from school, right? We can solve that problem. Or they're a head of household and they worry about their family and they're like, look, you know, how many heads of household feel that way? My job is to protect my family and keep them safe, right? And of course, you could say the same thing about a small business. So the first question, really simple, when we talk to our customers, do we talk to them in terms of who they are and what their problem is and how we can solve it, right? And the good news is you're solving problems all the time. Make sure that your customers know that you care about it. And the last one is around Codify. And again, I talked a little bit about this this morning. You know, these are great brands, right? Disneyland. MasterCard, Nike, right? No, so Disneyland doesn't go and say, you should come here because I have the tallest roller coaster and I have the most miles of roller coasters in the world and they're the fastest roller coasters. What they say is, if you come here, you're coming to the, fast, the happiest place on earth, right? And my kids believe it and I, have, I know that's true because about five months ago, I walked 27,000 steps a day in 96 degree heat while I was paying lots of money to do it, right? And they didn't go because they're like, oh yeah, you know, they've, they've got the most miles of roller coasters or whatever. It was just, they've created this brand and they're convincing their target audience, right? And as I said this morning, it's, you guys all, most of you, have like really compelling mission statements, right? And they're really important for your teams. The question is, you know, that promise of that experience, do you feel like your brands and how you're codifying it in you know, your mission statement, your tagline, your brands and all of that? So those three things, that's what I'd be asking my team to do. I wanna go back, I wanna make sure that when we do something like roll out Protect IQ, we're actually taking advantage of it. And we're using it as a way to show how we're different. Two, are we messaging in a way that it starts with the target audience, the subscriber, and their need, and how we're solving their problem? And then last one is, how are you codifying it? 
So I talked about um, how we're working with Gary uh, and his team. There are other examples, right? This one I love uh, from Home Telecom, right? If you look at kind of how, how they were presenting themselves, right? Oh, I got a gigabyte, I got 500, I got 300. If you look where they're going today, hey, we have a package for the remote warrior, right? How many people think of themselves as the remote warrior? I know I do, right? You know, we got a gotta win gamer play. We got a solid streamer play. And you know, by the way, their message is way more working from home, right? Now that's actually something that um, someone could read and go, yeah, that's me, right? And they don't have to think a lot, right? Because another thing that you know we've learned is that our brain is trained to survive and conserve energy. And most people will tell you, if you look at this and it takes you more than like three seconds to understand how it applies to you, you're done, right? Because that's the way our brains are trained, right? Preserve energy, we're out in the savanna looking for food, and what you're looking for is solutions to your problem. So when I look at this, I can see how it would apply to me. And by the way, here's the really nice thing. Michael talked about the 23 and 17 percent, right? You know, more people on 100 meg than a gig. This is their most popular package, 102 bucks a month. And what that says is, like my three children, there's more people who identify as that, so let's make that our premier package, right? So it's not impossible. So we've, you know, we've had a long history. We, uh, I announced in 2017 that we're going to do the whole market activation thing. We didn't envision that we'd have Jerry D and all that, but we knew it was really important. And I'm pretty sure none of you remember me announcing that at Connections in 2017. Anyone? Right? But now it's become a bitty, pretty big thing about what we're doing, right? So we built a lot of assets. We built an, you know, a, an electronic content builder to allow you to brand it easily, a video editor, really phenomenal. We started with the Jerry D videos. Now we're on to storytelling, right? And it's really, again, as I mentioned, a simple framework to help your teams think about how they actually build messaging that works, right? And it's based on the physiology of the human brain. And that's why every successful movie you've ever seen follows that exact same formula. In fact, actually, uh, Don, who's the, the gentleman we had in, he said, you know, it's really annoying. He really annoys his wife when he, he goes to the movie and he said, okay, that guy's gonna die in 30 seconds. And then this is what's gonna happen, right? And you know, they all follow the same formula, right? Because it's a proven formula that's been understood forever. So, Obviously, we're building lots of assets. Your teams have hopefully seen them. But I wanted to, to share an example of the kind of work we're, we really want to do with all of you. So you see the videos. You've probably seen lots of examples of your team using things. This, this one in the center here, SC Telecom, um, it's a really cool web page, right? So this is BlastWiFi.com. It exists out there. We're getting hundreds of thousands of hits. It's literally a website that we've built to serve as a guide for your teams, right? So guess what? This is SC Telecom's webpage. And they basically just took it and said, this is going to explain what we're doing for you with our offering. We're going to brand it. We're going to color it. We're going to put it on our webpage. And by the way, there's service providers of all sizes doing this. Allo is one of our bigger customers. They were the first one to do this. If you go to their managed Wi-Fi page, it literally is blastwifi.com with the Allo logo and the Allo colors. And as Brad had said, I got a lot to do. I don't need my marketing team, which is bigger than most of yours and will more well-funded than most of yours. Literally, that's better than anything we're going to build. We're going to take it. Boom. And the whole idea is that's market activation. We do it once and then we work with you to make it your own, right? And if your team's not taking advantage of it, you know, let me know, would love to help you, right? SC Telecom, really smart, why go build that yourself, right? So what's really interesting though is we're not just seeing customers who are doing this with our help. The best teams are actually doing some interesting things themselves. 
All right, there's Don Miller. I already talked about him. So here are some examples from some of our customers. Thanks for coming over. I'm so glad we could catch up. Here, kids, take this tablet. Oh, a tablet? All my online mom groups say so you should never give your kids a tablet. There's way too many bad sites out there. We have an app for that. The MyRTC Net app has parental controls, so I can filter content, so I'm always in control of the chaos. Control the chaos. Download today. <sighs> so where were we? Tickets? Yep, I got them right here. I'll see you at nine. Call GBTC today for our premium Wi Fi service because Wi Fi dead zones Ooh. are downright terrifying. GBTC, official Wi Fi of the undead. So, you know, all you know, different different ads, different approaches, different purposes. Some a little more informative, other ones, you know, I think actually quite funny. Um, but the thing that's really key about them is that they're not focused on themselves and explaining the service and all of that. They're focused on the experience, right? Like how can an amazing app experience transform the way you live at home, right? And it's not talking about the speed or the power, and these aren't big organizations who are spending millions of dollars. And, you know, it's really encouraging because it's, you know, quite different than what we would have seen five years ago. And again, our, our goal is to highlight examples like that, but also help you and the agency you work with make that same kind of transition.